Gentlemen, there's a time and place to cry, but that does not mean you should wear your emotions on your sleeves. So I'm sure you've heard the term toxic masculinity. It gets thrown around so often that at this point people accept it like it's scientific fact. It is a horrendous notion that harms men in my opinion, insinuating their nature is inherently toxic. How can a man live a healthy life when his masculinity is being attacked by everyone? And do women really want non-masculine men? For a definition, toxic masculinity is the expression of masculine traits that are reinforced by society and can be dangerous. Toxic masculinity enforces character traits like violence, social dominance, misogyny, homophobia, etc. Now, I'm no intellectual or anything, but it would seem to me that someone who displays toxic masculine traits per se is simply someone who is a bad person. Defenders of toxic masculinity say, oh, we don't think masculinity in itself is toxic, just certain aspects of it. Very fishy that out of all the terms to use to describe a bad individual, they find a way to throw masculinity in there. And why is it that only men are accused of displaying toxic masculinity? Women have masculine traits as well. Women can be aggressive, dominant, disagreeable, etc. And these traits can harm others. Women tend to express aggression verbally while men tend to do it physically, but it still causes harm to others. Does this mean women can express toxic masculinity? And if so, how did they inherit these traits if masculinity is a social construct that is pushed on men while feminine traits are pushed on women? Why aren't women submissive, empathetic, and agreeable all of the time? And why are some women not like that? This is a review of multiple multiple studies on aggression in humans. Turns out there is not as much research as there should be in aggression in women compared to men. The study here does find a positive correlation though between aggression and testosterone. Testosterone is a hormone that serves a slew of functions in both men and women. As many of you know, men have much more testosterone than women. Changes in testosterone can have many different physical effects, but also behavioral effects as well. Decreased testosterone can lead to many sexual and physical complications, but we are more concerned with the behavioral effects for the video. Low testosterone can lead to depression, apathy, low self-confidence, bad memory, etc. High testosterone can lead to anger, irritability, and aggression. Back to the study though, researchers researched 87 women who were in prison for violent crimes. They found a positive correlation between their heightened testosterone and their aggression. So as we can see, hormonal factors greatly affect women's ability to express masculine traits, just like in men. And if we're going to look at environmental factors affecting behavior, we shouldn't automatically assume that those environmental factors are gender norms in society. This study also looked at malnourished and depressed mothers. Boys Boys are 2.5 times more likely to display antisocial behavior if their mother was malnourished during pregnancy. Maternal depression has a bigger effect on girls later in life, but it also affects men. These are also environmental factors that contribute to behavior of men and women, but they have nothing to do with societal norms. Does society play a role in the main aspects of behavior in men and women? Yes. Is it more of a role than biological factors? No, not in my opinion. I have not seen solid evidence of societal norms affecting behavior when it comes to things like aggression and dominance and temperament. Because obviously there are certain behavioral traits that are affected by society, but an aggressive person is an aggressive person. There is nothing you're gonna do to stop an aggressive person from being aggressive. You can channel that aggression to things that are more useful, but a dominant and aggressive person will stay that way because you cannot deny hormonal factors. Again, look at the research on violent women. I'm sure society tried to make them feminine, but obviously they didn't particularly care. Why did these women have higher than average testosterone? I'm not sure. Genetics is probably the answer, but that doesn't matter. What matters is their testosterone levels are higher and they happen to be more violent than the average woman. This is not a coincidence. So we have media and universities pushing a doctrine of toxic masculinity that is untrue and harmful to both men and women. Masculine traits are useful. Aggression is useful against bad people. Are you a good person if you are so agreeable and so much of a pushover that you let bad people triumph? No, you're not. You're a weak person. A gazelle is not virtuous. It has no choice but to be weak. A lion that can be violent but chooses not to is virtuous. But again, dominant and masculine masculine men are being attacked. Any display of masculine traits by men is seen as toxic masculinity, mansplaining, manspreading, and misogyny. And this is horrible for women. For any women watching this, do you like weak men? I'm pretty sure the answer is no. And weak men know this because they are horrible with women. They're the nice guys that are fine with being rolled over. But then when they get rejected, then they get angry and aggressive. And this is an ugly and pitiful way to express your aggression. So the masculinity will come out one way or the other. So you might as well use it in a useful manner. A manner that is strong, dependable, and a pillar people can get support from. I saw this opinion piece and cannot believe anyone would think this way. Unfortunately, I can't find the article anymore for some reason. I found it, told myself I'd screenshot it later for the video, but then when I came back, I couldn't find it anywhere. But this is a rundown of what this guy was saying, and believers of toxic masculinity probably agree with him. Toxic masculinity
masculinity being bad for men's mental health because they can't cry. Men should celebrate when a woman beats him at something or earns more money than him. I, I mean, what a bunch of BS. I don't celebrate when a man beats me. Why would I celebrate if a woman beats me? And how is this not seen as sexist in and of itself? Women, do you really want men to give you a crutch and coddle you just because you're a woman? I'm not sure where this notion men can't cry came from. We look at Marcus Aurelius a lot in this channel. He was probably one of the toughest men who went through the most traumatic experiences you can go through. His children died, he cried. His nation was overrun with the plague, he cried. His favorite teacher died, he cried. Crying and sadness are human emotions. What is masculine is feeling human emotion, becoming a stronger individual, and then moving forward. Gentlemen, there is a time and place to cry, but do not buy this stuff that you should wear your emotions on your sleeves. <laughs> I mean, does anyone actually think this is good advice? Go on a date with a girl and cry your eyes out. Come back to me and let me know how that works out for you. Good men and women have embraced masculine traits in the past, aggression, dominance, being in danger, etc., and have saved lives by doing so. What if these individuals just cowered away? How virtuous would they have been if they just cried and repressed their masculine traits instead of stopping threats? And it should be noted that feminine traits are useful as well. If we didn't incorporate feminine traits and were 100% masculine, we'd constantly be at each other's throats and wouldn't be able to enter a room without dominating everyone. And some men do act like this, and neither men nor women like them. So if we accept the notion that toxic masculinity has nothing to do with masculinity, and more to do with simply being a bad human being, which some of you may have not accepted yet, it begs the question, why is this stuff being pushed? Throughout history, men and women have largely cooperated with each other to keep the species alive, support each other, and go through a life of suffering as partners. When men and women cooperate, a society is strong. When they don't, society is weak. This study found that single parent households had a strong correlation with children being abused, being raised in poverty, and committing crime. This statistic is the most alarming and should really scream out how necessary it is for men and women to work together. When the youth fail, the society will ultimately fail. It seems to me then that the elite class funding the media, bribing government, and influencing us all together has the goal of pitting men and women against each other to weaken us so that they can take advantage of us. Look at what happened with Robin Hood, the AMC stocks, and the GameStop stocks. Some of society came together and the elite class got upset and closed the whole thing down. We now know that there are people behind the scenes pulling the strings. Pundits in the media calling the Reddit group alt-white Trumpists? Who are they trying to cover for? This is the same media that make women believe that men exist to oppress them and men believe women exist to ruin their lives socially and financially. So what are we going to do then? Just roll over and let them deny us of who we are? Let them take advantage of us like we're cattle who need a master? Or are we going to work together again and become strong so we can't be taken advantage of? Weakness is not a virtue and emasculated society is weak. Let's keep denying people their masculinity and let's see how ugly it gets. And what is being repressed will come one way or the other and it's going to be ugly.